Today, I'm happy to take part in Team Seas, which is an initiative led by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober to raise $30 million to clean 30 million pounds of trash out of the ocean. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about the ocean, or I'm not really an applied mathematician who could talk about the impacts of taking 30 million pounds of trash out of the ocean, although I'm sure those impacts are huge. But what I can do is explore all of the finite groups of order 30 million. Well, maybe not all of them, because as we'll see, I think calculating all of them or describing all of them is a bit too difficult of a proposition. So instead, we'll just look at the structure of some of them and look at some nice classic results along the way. Okay, so to get started, let's review the definition of a group and we'll look at some basic examples. So a group, which we'll generally call G, is a set together with an operation satisfying three axioms. So the first axiom is there, an, there is an identity element. So I'll write it like this. There is an E in G such that E X equals X equals X E for all X in G, where that operation here is just written kind of as multiplication, although it's not always multiplication. Okay, our next axiom is that there are inverses to all of our elements. So every x in G has another element paired with it, which we'll call x inverse, so that when you combine them, you get back to the identity. And then finally, we have an associativity condition for our operation. So in other words, for all x, y, and z, if you combine x and y and then combine z, you get the same thing as combining y and z and then combining x. As long as we do this in the same commutativity order, notice that we do not require our group to be commutative. As we'll see later, not all groups are commutative or abelian. Okay, so let's look at a couple of basic examples. So maybe the most basic arithmetic example would be the group of integers where our operation is addition. So obviously zero would be the identity because zero plus anything just is whatever you started with. Zero plus three equals three. Zero plus negative five equals negative five. Well, we could write that as zero plus n equals n for any integer n. Then we also have inverses because we have negative numbers. If we were not working over integers, but we were instead working over just positive natural numbers, then we would in fact not have inverses. But since we've got negative numbers, we have inverses. n plus negative n is equal to zero. So we would say minus n or negative n is the additive inverse of n. So these guys come in pairs. So you've got like one and negative one, 14 and negative 14, and then so on and so forth. And furthermore, addition is associative. And so that kind of goes without saying, you learn that in grade school. Okay, so let's look at a little bit more geometric of an example. And that would be something I'll call C3, which is the cyclic group with three elements. But it can also be seen as the rotational symmetries of an equilateral triangle. So in this case, E will be a zero degree rotation. R will be a 120 degree rotation and R squared will be a 240 degree rotation. So this is an outline of how those operations take place. So we have our starter triangle up here, which is labeled clockwise as A, B, C. If we apply a zero degree rotation, there is no change. If we apply a 120 degree rotation counterclockwise, that rotates our triangle this way, we get A, B, C. So notice those vertices have been rotated. And then if we apply R squared, which is two copies of the 120 degree rotation, then we get A as this vertex up here, and then B and then C. So you might say, well, what about these things like an identity and inverses and associativity? Well, we won't check associativity, but notice this guy is most definitely the identity, the zero degree rotation. And then these two are inverses of each other because if you put them together, you get a 360 degree rotation, which is like doing nothing at all. 
Okay, so now let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at a couple of other examples of groups. So now let's look at a couple of other geometric examples of groups. So we've got D3, which is related to C3. This is going to be all symmetries of a triangle. So that includes the three rotations that we saw before, as well as the three reflections. So we've got these three obvious reflective axes. So we could reflect about this axis right here, which is vertical. So notice that that fixes this top vertex and swaps these two vertices on the base. And then we've got similar reflections about those other two lines. So reflections are most definitely different than rotations. Now a generalization of this would be dn, the dihedral group of order 2n, which has all symmetries of a regular n-gon. So in this case we have n rotations and n reflections. And there's like an obvious substructure of this, which we might call CN. And this would be just all rotations, then forgetting about having the reflections in the first place. So this would be having N rotations. And then here are two more that are pretty interesting. So A4, which is the alternating group on four letters. So that's the symmetries of a tetrahedron. So let's recall a tetrahedron is a three-dimensional object made from four equilateral triangles. So I've drawn a little bit of a picture of it here. And then A5 is the symmetries of an icosahedron. So this is a little bit harder to draw. I won't try, but this is a 20-sided figure. I should have say a 20-sided solid. And A5 is an alternating group just like A4 is. Okay, so now that we have reviewed the notion of a group and looked at some examples, let's start to explore groups of order 30 million. We've got one last thing that we need to do before we start looking at groups of order 30 million, and that is recall the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. So it says that any finite abelian group is isomorphic to this direct product of cyclic groups. So we've got CP1R1, that would be the cyclic group of order P1 to the R1, where P1 is prime. In other words, all of the rotations of an n-gon where that has sides P1 to the R1. So that's going to be cross C P2 to the R2 all the way up to Pn to the Rn. Like I said, all of the Pi are primes, but they are not necessarily distinct. Now let's recall a pretty classic result that says that Cm cross Cn is the same thing as Cmn if and only if M and N are relatively prime. In other words, their greatest common divisor is one. So let's look at a pictorial example of that. So if we take all of the rotations of a triangle and all of the rotations of a square, and we in some ways take their product, then what we'll get is all of the rotations of a 12-gon. So here I've drawn a 12-gon. Okay, so now we're finally ready to look at the number 30 million. In order to look at finite groups of order 30 million, we really need to know its prime factorization, being inspired by this fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. So a pretty easy calculation shows that 30 million factors into 2 to the 7th times 3 times 5 to the 7th. Now, if we've got a group of order 30 million, we can apply this to see that that group has the following form. So it'll be C3 cross, I'll call this thing H2 cross H5, where H2 is built so that it has order 2 to the 7, and H5 is built so that it has order 5 to the 7. But there's going to be lots of different possibilities for H2 and H5 because of this down here. Notice the 3 factors out pretty naturally and there's not anything you can do with that. So this right here you can think of as the symmetries of a equilateral triangle. I should say the rotational symmetries of the equilateral triangle just like we have been. So now let's look at all of the possibilities. Well, we won't look at all the possibilities because there are quite a few but the possibilities for H2. Just to recall what I said, the order of H2 should be equal to 2 to the 7. Okay, 
Well, that means we need to split this two to the seven up as many different ways as possible. But that's gonna involve writing seven in as many different sums as possible. But there's an easy way to do that, and that's with partitions. So I'm gonna make a quick chart of partitions of seven, and then the groups that are related to these partitions in this setting. And I should say these are the finite abelian groups. So how many partitions are there of seven? Well, I'll let you guys check there are 15. We'll look at just a couple. So there's the partition of seven, which is just the number seven. So it's a partition with one part. There's the partition, which is six plus one. There's one which is five plus two. There's one that says five plus one plus one. So that's going in some sort of order. Then maybe let's jump down and see that we have another partition of the form three plus two plus one plus one. That would be another example of a partition of seven. So all in all, there are 15. So I've given you five. I'll let you guys write out the rest if you want to. So now what groups can we associate to these partitions? Well, to the partition seven, I'll associate C2 to the seven. So in other words, this is the group of rotations of a two to the seven gone. Well, that's a 128 sided polygon. That's pretty interesting. Then what about this? Uh, six plus one, well, we, as we will associate that to two to the six, C two to the six cross C two to the first power. So that's gonna be the rotational symmetries of a 64 gon, and then the rotational symmetries of a rectangle. And we use a rectangle here because there's no such thing as a two gon in Euclidean space. Okay, well, let's look at this, five plus two, so that'll be C of two to the fifth cross C of two squared. So that'll be the rotational symmetries of a 32 gon times the rotational symmetries of a square. That's a four gon. Now, what about this one down here? So this would be C two cubed cross C two squared cross C two cross C two. So what do we have for this last one? We have the symmetries of an octagon multiplied by the symmetries of a square multiplied this by the symmetries of two rectangles. And those are all rotational symmetries. Okay, so those are all of the possibilities for H2. And now you could imagine that we would have exactly the same possibilities for H5. So let's make another little chart down here, which I will partly fill in for H5. It's just the order of these will be five to the seven, five to the six, and so on and so forth. So here we have, this is C five to the seven, C five to the six cross C five, and so on and so forth. So this would be the rotational symmetries of a five to the seven gone. This is the product of the rotational symmetries of a five to the six gone cross a regular pentagon. And then as you can see, that goes down. So I think I mentioned earlier that in total, there are 15 total partitions of seven. And each of those partitions gives rise to another group H2. And each of those partitions gives rise to another group H5. But putting that together, that tells us that there are 15 possibilities for this group H2. And there are also 15 possibilities for this group H5. So, that means in total, there are 15 times 15 possible ways to choose these two together. This C3 is forced upon us. So really, that tells us that there are 225 total groups. And those are not all of the groups of order 30 million. Those are just the abelian groups of order 30 million. So to finish this off, I'll write down a couple of examples of non-abelian groups of order 30 million. I think it's unreasonable to classify all such groups, but if anyone has any ideas or have any, has any literature towards classification of groups with 
order that is this high, maybe leave it in the comments. So we just got done classifying all abelian groups of order 30 million, and now we're gonna look at some assorted non-abelian groups of order 30 million. Like I said before, it's unreasonable to totally classify these. So first off, we've got the dihedral group, 15 million. So this is all reflectional and rotational symmetries of a 15 million gon. So that's a polygon with 15 million sides. So there are 15 million rotations and 15 million reflections. So that's pretty crazy. Next, we have C2 cross the dihedral group D, 7,500,000. So that would be the rotational symmetries of a rectangle times all symmetries of a 7.5 million gon. Next, we've got D4 cross C, 3,750,000. So this is going to be all reflectional and rotational symmetries of a square, and this is all rotational symmetries of a 3,750,000 gone. And here's one that I've hacked together, which I think is pretty interesting. We have A5. Recall that that was the symmetries of an icosahedron cross Q8. That's the quaternion group. It has eight elements. And what's interesting about the quaternions is that they are really important in computer graphics. Then we've got D50. So that would be all symmetries of a 50 gone. And then we have C5 and C125. So here's like a, I think a nice assorted list of non-abelian groups. Okay, so to finish this off, I'd like to look at the groups that are slightly bigger and slightly smaller than 30 million. So it seemed totally unreasonable to classify all of the groups of order 30 million, but it actually turns out to be quite easy to classify the groups of order 30 million and one or 29,999,999. And why is that? That's because each of these are prime numbers. They're both prime, which I think is actually pretty nice that we've got this twin prime pair that's hugging the number 30 million. I think that makes 30 million a pretty special number. But if we've got a prime number, we know that the only group is this cyclic group CP. In other words, it's the rotational symmetries of a P gon. So up here, we've got the rotational symmetry group of a 30 million and one gon. That's the only group. And over here, we've got the rotational symmetry group of a 29,999,999 gon. That is the only. So I'll finish our discussion here, but I wanna leave you guys a couple of questions to think about. And that would be, well, what about groups of, of order 30 million and two or order 29,990,998? So I played around with one of these and it's actually quite easy to classify all of the groups of one of these orders, perhaps both, but I only played around with one of them. So maybe look at the prime factorization of these numbers and think about what types of groups you could build with this order and post it in the comments. And also if you're able, make sure to donate to Team C's. I think this is really important work that is gonna help our planet. And that's a good place to stop.